<laughs> there I am. Okay. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Welcome to another uh, live stream Friday. Uh, my name is Cade. This is Retainer Designer. I make YouTube videos for um, for orthodontic lab technicians, ortho labs, people who are interested in this. Uh, but today's a little different. I got a little different setup here. Uh, oh, hello, Luciano. How are you doing? Nice to see you again. Glad you're here. Um, hopefully y'all, uh, again, can hear me okay. Uh, but we're doing something a little different. I, I, as you know, I usually look around for my live stream. Uh, I look around to see what I have in the lab that I can do a video on. And today we had a bunch of Essex. So I thought, well, you know what? Let me do some Essex. Um, uh, show you how I'd make an Essex. But actually, I might be unusual because I actually do them on an old Biostar computer or computer. I use an old Biostar uh, thermal forming machine. Uh, and we'll go over that in a little bit of what that entails. Uh, but this is from 1987. And the reason I know that is I actually opened this up to do some maintenance and on the inside was written in pencil 1987 and, and then the serial number and stuff like that. So this is uh, from 1987. Now disregard this blue color. This is from uh, the, the little history is I worked for as an orthodontic assistant. One of the doctors I worked for as an orthodontic assistant, he's the one that actually got me into the ortho lab. And uh, so I've worked for him for years. I still work for him. And one day he, he called me up and said, Kate, I, I realized you opened up your new lab again. Uh, would you like my old Biostar? And this is the actual Biostar I trained on when I was working for him as an orthodontic assistant. Because uh, he had upgraded to uh, an Urco form under this thing, which you can see I have it draped. Uh, and I'll do a video on this. I, I love this thing too. But he upgraded to one of these and said he didn't have a use for this. This was in storage. But the blue color came from him. He, he went and had it pow powder coated blue. This is like a gunmetal gray, uh, if you ever see it uh, in, in, in its raw form. But uh, this is still kicking 35 years old, still makes a great uh, thermal form suck down. Uh, and that's, so that's what we're gonna do today is uh, I'm just gonna show you around the Biostar. I'm gonna show you how to, how I prep my models to get them ready for one of these machines. Actually, for, it works for both. Uh, and then uh, we'll actually do a couple suck downs and I'll bring you along and show you how to do that. If we have enough time, if y'all want to do it, comment down below if y'all want me to show you how I trim them uh, and cut them off the model. I can show that too. So I have a camera set up for that. So uh, Sawyer is helping me with the, uh, the live stream. Uh, he's going to be doing a little camera work. There's his hand. There's his hand right there. <laughs> he doesn't want to be in the camera. But uh, Sawyer, go to the, the computer. Show him what the new Biostar looks like so that is uh uh this is from 1987 and this is the new one this is the biostar scan with lcd display as you can see it is uh 4792 so pretty much almost 5000 us dollars pretty expensive but as you can see on there there's a computer now uh and to the right of that's a little nodule a little bump out right next to it that you can actually scan the material and it will set all the parameters and the settings in there. This one, you don't get to do all the settings and parameters. You you pretty much just do a timer. And uh, I can show that in a little bit, but that's the newest Ballstar. I wanna say it's a Ballstar 6. Uh, this is two. I think this is Ballstar 6, I'm not sure, but this is number two. Uh, the the Ballstar 1 looks just like this, but I think this is on this side and there's a bunch of little uh, things like this, little contraptions. We'll move to this one, I guess. There are a bunch of little uh, contraptions and stuff that come with the Biostar one. This one um, is a little different. This is a pellet cup. Um, so this is, is this a better shot over here? So I've already got it heated up. So this is the, um, this button only controls the heater. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this gets up to 450 degrees, uh, and that's all this button controls. Uh, this button over here, this knob controls the actual pressure. Uh, and I don't think you can see it on here, but you're gonna be my cameraman. 
I got it. You got it? So this is uh, the dial. This shows the pressure in the bars. Uh, we want to keep it around four. I think it's faded, but there's a mark on there where you need to see it. Uh, and so this controls how much, if you need more or less pressure, depending on your, uh, your compressor. Now, let me back up. This is a positive thermal forming machine, which means you need a tube. You need a hose from your compressor. This actually isn't the compressor we're using. It's an example. It's a backup, but my compressor is in the shed, but you need an actual hose with positive pressure. So this is a positive pressure thermal forming machine. Whereas down here, I don't know if you can see it. I did a live stream on this thing. This is a negative uh, thermal forming machine, negative pressure or vacuum forming machine. So there's a, vo uh, a motor down here and it pulls a vacuum and it sucks the air out. Whereas on this one, you put the model on top of here put the model here and the air comes out of here and goes into here so whenever you flip this let me put this on here so it doesn't fall off so when you flip this and pressurize it the air goes into the top and pushes down onto the model so that gives you a very exact uh thermal forming for your for your model it it is a uh, um a very positive pressure is probably one of the better is probably the better method of thermal forming is positive pressure because it actually pushes the air down onto the model instead of sucking air from the bottom and pulling it against it so because like, sometimes you can get folds and stuff in your in your model um so this does have the pellets most of y'all are, are my, my daughter loves to play with these so these are stainless steel pellets and it's mainly used for when you use big models let me get an example here like this now i would usually trim this but this is a if you if you have a big base like this the taller it is the more it's going to stretch your film so if you can't do a uh if you can't trim this in a horseshoe manner uh you can put it in the beads like this so the the, the newer biostar has this same thing uh, and the beads will block out anywhere you do not want to have the plastic thermoform against so uh, that is um, what these beads are for now this does have a great little feature of the keep things nice and clean and it's got these little things down here that help to uh, control your beads this will obviously get all over everything uh, let me put this platform back on I, you have to actually um, you can either not use these beads always keep them on the ready because you never know what model you're going to get um, so make sure you don't want any beads on your your surface here i'm going to put this platform back on here and this actually is tiny tiny little holes that go through here and so as the air is pushed down it passes through here passes through the beads and here's a cup there's holes in the bottom of the cup and so the air that pushes through the beads goes through those holes and out so uh there's no backlog of anything so what i was saying before uh about this is it has a nice little pellet tray so as you spill pellets out it'll catch them and then you can uh, sprinkle them back into your pellet tray and then you can put this back in here and it's got a, a little thing down here that's activated by the front of this tray that opens it so if you pull this out and beads fall in there they won't fall into the bottom they'll catch it in the bottom of this thing which I, can you see this they'll catch in the bottom of this like that and then whenever you push this tray back in those pellets will fall into the tray so uh pretty cool little system that they did back in the day now you get these from great lakes orthodontics that's where that link was from uh and that uh they, they're probably two thousand dollars back then or, or a thousand so uh these are very, uh, these things are bulletproof. Again, the, this is 35 years old, still produces a great Essex 
uh, what I call Essex visible retainer, whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, these they're sold from Great Lakes. I think they're made in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken by shoe dental. Uh, but uh, you don't see these. You'll maybe see them on, on eBay. They're actually, I did find one on eBay. It's a Ball Star 1. Uh, still going for 500 bucks. So you can, you can tell these are still valuable. And this is why. They, it still works today uh, after 35 years. Uh, I, I, th I want to say the doctor got this from, got it used from somewhere else. So... They, they last a long time, but let's get going. Let's get, let's uh, do a suck down on one or two of them. Uh, but let me show you how I prep those. Let me put this model back. Hey, uh, are you going back? Okay. So Sawyer is going back to the office. He's going to show you. Uh, so we're, we're doing digital models, right? And so we get these models from the doctors and the, the models have brackets on them. In these two specific cases I'm going to use today. Uh, these these uh, brackets have models on them, so he's showing you the, them. And uh, a shout out to EasyRx because they uh, they have this auto bracket removal. Otherwise, I would have to print this. There's two options: I can print this, take a burr, and then trim off all the brackets. Time consuming, messy. Uh, or I can uh, digitally remove them independently, one at a time. But as Sawyer just showed you, we sent this actual case through to uh, EasyRx auto bracket removal and it automatically removed them all, which as you can see uh, on the distal parts where the molar is, uh, you can actually see there's still like a, a, a clasp. If you, sorry, if you show the lingual of those molars, you can still see the clasp or on the lingual. This is actually an AI driven software uh, that they've taught to see what teeth look like. And this is what a bracket on a tooth looks like. Remove this bracket, smooth it out. And as you see on the lingual of those molars is still uh, the band. So one, one has a lug on it, one has a, uh, a clasp, or not a clasp, um, not a lug, I forget what those are called on the lingual. Uh, but they actually, uh, they can't see those yet. So I actually have to grind those off. Uh, so there's still a little bit of doctoring up so I'll, I'm actually going to grab this model and it's actually this model right here. Uh, I'll, I'll put it in front of this uh, camera over here. Uh, this is actually what got printed without the brackets. And uh, what the third camera is showing, right? This top down. Okay, you can see this. Okay. so. Uh, this is the actual model right here that we just showed you uh, and I have already cleaned it up. I use a little burr like this and you can see on the posterior it does get a little, the, the, the software really doesn't know what to do with the gum line. So it does a real good job on the front. Um, sometimes you can't there's a you can see just a little bit of a bulge right there and i'll just smooth that out but this one is already ready to go i'm going to put it on the on the uh the bio start we'll, we'll and we'll prep the second one and get it ready to go so i use a little burr like this uh mainly because it has a flat surface especially for these front teeth like this i'm going to turn my suction on so I don't have to breathe this in. So hopefully you can still hear me. So I'm just slightly, I mean, the, the auto bracket removal does a pretty good job, but sometimes it did a real good job there. This, especially with those hooks on the, the molar bands that have uh, hooks on them, the gingival hooks, it sometimes has a hard time figuring that out. There is uh, the cleat, that's what it is, that's the name of it. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of that. I'm not going to try to take the band off, there's the lingual cleat there. And again, I'm just kind of removing a little bit of that. I'm just going to accentuate, if that's a, a word, if I'm using it right, accentuate the, the gum line there gum line there and then if you think the gums are a little too puffy you know you do this on stone models too if 
the gum seem a little too puffy because you know if you've been doing this for all you know the sx won't fit uh if the gums are too puffy all right so let me dust this off and you can see how it kind of scuffed it up a bit so i do like to put a little bit of separator this is jbc's acrylic to acrylic separator uh called part all i like to use this it makes a nice shiny smooth surface uh just makes the the suck down feel so much better or it makes it look better at the end so i'll put it one or two coats uh and it's just this little green liquid here i turn this off i'm going to put this under a fan and that'll be the second one we do now this uh so this is the one that uh sawyer showed you on the computer uh and we're going to do this the first time or this is the, the first one so the beautiful thing about 3d printing is you can print in in a horseshoe shape you don't have to do a suck down on a full model so you can actually print in a horseshoe shape and it just it's perfect for this and it makes it go so much faster at the when you get to this point uh now material that i'm using oh we did get a comment uh oh hello diana nice to see you okay what's the name of the machine maybe i can find a used one okay this is a biostar oh they found it oh i should keep reading it's in the title of the video got it yeah so this is actually a biostar 2 they make a biostar 1 uh this was made in 87 um uh, and again you can buy brand new ones or almost five thousand dollars from great lakes great lakes ortho.com is the the address where you can officially buy these from or you can find them on ebay diane i don't know what they have in ecuador if they have an ebay there or or what uh but yeah these are like i said they're bulletproof so as far as the material we're going to use um great lakes does have their own brand that you can order from them uh uh, let's move to this camera. This is a uh, thermal forming material, the clear splint block blah, bio krill. And it has, you know, it's pretty basic. Uh, some of these have like actual, um, barcode scan on them, which is pretty cool. If you can't tell, I, I keep everything. You probably can't see in the, in the, uh, the video or not well i can't keep these in here they keep falling out all right you're rejected yeah so you can actually see this actually not a bet so this is a shoe this is actually the 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 people who produce the the uh the biostar and then they sit they sell direct through great lakes ortho and so this is uh, some hard cast. Uh, and so remember that new one that has a computer, that new Biostar, and it has a barcode scanner. So you actually would boop, you do that, and it would set the computer, it, set, it would set the time, it would set the temperature and everything. And then it will beep, beep at you when it's ready to go. Uh, but also you have down here, you could also type in the code 162, uh, but it will also let you know what the heating is as far as the timer. But I am gonna show you what we do. So I use JBC for all my acrylics. JBC has their own uh, clear splint material. I use uh, 040 of an inch, so one millimeter thick, uh, and it's a five inch round, so or 125 millimeters. So that is one of the difference between this one and this one. This diameter is 125 millimeters. The diameter on this one's 120. So when you go to order, you got to make sure you order 125 if you're using a Biostar. So this stuff comes in a package. I'm going to go ahead and get two materials out because we're going to do two of these suck downs. And notice they come with a little uh, uh, oxygen ab absorber there. Uh, more moisture, not oxygen, moisture, because 
and I keep them in the bag. Uh, these Essex are kind of sensitive. Uh, some of these materials you use are sensitive to the environment. Uh, they will absorb oxygen out of the air if they're just sitting there. Uh, so if you do some of these and you have some old materi material you're using, uh, and it comes out and it bubbles up really bad, it means it absorbs some oxygen uh, or some moisture and it gets into the actual plastic of the material uh, and will come out as bu bubbles in your, in your Essex. So, this is how I get ready. Now, notice on that other one that had the barcode, uh, it sets the time and the temperature. Well, with the, this Biostar, you only get one temperature, and that's, like I said before, I think it's 450 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So 450 degrees Celsius would be, that'd be very hot. Uh, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so then it's all about time. Whereas this machine, and like I said, I'll do a video on it later. Let me go ahead and unwrap this so that y'all see what I'm talking about. This is an Urco dent. Um, so this machine, uh, it's it has an actual laser back here, and it'll actually read the temperature of the material as it's heating up. So you put the material in there, it'll actually read the temperature from this little laser. And when the material gets to a certain temperature, then it's ready to go and do the suck down. Now this is a, a vacuum former machine, but this is probably one of the best vacuum forming machines out there as this is a positive pressure machine. Uh, so I'm gonna get this ready. This has a chamber, which is this part right here. Uh, and this has a, a ring on here and you put this foil in here and you clamp it down like that. But what, I'm going to do is this material you got it comes with a film. So you can peel that off. And you kind of want to do this last minute. This is just to help keep scratches and and dirt away from your film. And then I'm going to just clamp it in here. Now, so you remember we I had you do this. I fixed it. So there's a little little uh, Allen screw right here and I, I fixed it. So now it's level because you want it to be level when you swing this over here. Uh, now going back to what I was talking about with the time, uh, I got this off of Amazon. This is a, a timer uh, that we got from Amazon. I, and I put a link down below and it mag it's magnet. So it just sticks to the front. <laughs> So it actually looks like it's part of the Biostar, but you can set the time by rotating this. So after a trial and error, 35 seconds under the heat lamp is what we go for. Now I do have a, again, the pressure is on. I have my, I have a, a little cutoff valve here that I cut it off when it's not in use because it has a small leak to it. Of course, it's 35 years old. Most of us that are over 35 have a small leak to us anyway. So I, I turn this pressure on and oh, I got a little dust on that. Don't want that. So I'm going to, I'm going to rotate this. You might have to back up a little bit. Uh, I'll rotate this here. I'm going to turn the timer on and let that go for 35 seconds. Uh, like I was saying before, this was not sitting level, but there's a little adjustment screw on the back. And so I got it to sit level. Otherwise we were using this little thing to put in there and uh, get it to sit level. Otherwise, it'll, it'll heat one side more than the other. I got a phone call and it's spam. Now, one thing about this one is you cannot walk away. Uh, so we're six, five, four, three. So I'm gonna swing this out, flip this over, and then we're gonna pressurize the chamber. Now, if you look down in there, you can see that the plastic has been pressurized again. You can't really see that very well. Can you? Let me see if I can get some light. <clears throat> so you can kind of see. What I'll do on the next one is uh, I'll try to get the light here first so we can actually see it pressurized against it. So it is, it is continuously adding pressure here, forcing it down while the, the material cools. 
there is a valve right here that if you turn it, it will re it'll release the air and it will run air across it and it'll cool it down faster. But what we usually do is just hit this again, let it cool down for 35 seconds, uh, and then we are, uh, that's plenty of time for us. Now to get this out of here, it's a little contraption like, you gotta, it's reverse of what you just did. You're gonna pressurize that, you're gonna swing this over to the left, and that disengages the material. And then I'm gonna flip this, and I usually put it right back where I found it. And that's what we got. Now you can tell, very a very good pressure. This is where you can tell you've adapted. When there is hardly any gap right here between the material and the model, that's when you know you got a good thermal form. And that's where these uh, BioStars come in. They do an excellent job thermoforming. You can see it's it's completely adapted. Now, whenever it's it's actually swooped out a little bit here, you know you didn't get a full thermal form. But let's get the other one ready. We got some comments. Perry, hey Cade, I did an Essex yesterday and forgot to take off the blue. Have <laughs> to use an eraser to get it off. Time consuming. Yes. Uh, you talk to my wife about that. We did the exact same thing yesterday. Uh, we did, uh, we forgot to take the blue off. Uh, and actually, here's some proof. If you can switch to this camera. This is our her pulling off that blue material, peeling it out of the, the Essex material. Uh, so some of these are you read the instructions, some materials you use, there's, uh, this is probably some of my favorite material, this GT Flex Pro. Uh, and it, it does an excellent job. It's got a uh, blue film on there also, a light blue actually, I think a lot of people like it. But you actually leave that film on and then you cut everything off. Ooh, that looks terrible. but. Uh, that usually they don't look like that. Yeah, there we go. And so you got GT Flex Pro. So you actually leave the blue material on, do the suck down, uh, and then this peels out, you know, like you're peeling off the plastic off new electronics. It's pretty cool. So that is that. Uh, and then you can just go right into the next one. So let me grab this real quick. And here's your next one. And you just go right into, hey Perry, uh, what bow star do you have? Do you have an old one like this? Or do you have one of the new ones? They also make a mini star, uh, which is like a reduced down version of this that is good for in-house in uh, laboratories that do like Essex and stuff for the patients. Uh, this does a little bit more, or the new, the big bow stars do a little bit more, but the mini star is about half price. They, they do a little bit more as far as like uh, materials and, and things like that. All right, so you think we were be able to do this? Let me throw this away. All right. So I'm gonna set the timer and go. I'm gonna move that over. Oh, that's a good shot. And again, what I'm gonna do, oh, that shouldn't be in there. Uh, I'm gonna swing this this way, I'm gonna flip it over, pull this toward me, and this will activate the air to go into the chamber and force air on top, from the top side of the material onto the model and push down onto it instead of sucking it from the bottom. Let's see, nine seconds. All right, let me see if I can get, I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna put the light on and then, uh, what we'll, we'll do I almost burn myself? Flip it over. Turn the light on. Here we go. Ooh, that was a good shot, wasn't it? That was a good shot. Okay. So, okay, I was able to get that. I'm glad we were able to get that shot. But that is pretty much it. I'm going to turn this off for right now because I don't need the uh, this heater going. I do have more Essex to do today. I'll just, what I usually do is turn this on like five. 
10 minutes before I need to do a suck down. And, uh, and that's what we, that's what we do. Uh, looks like we have a little bit of time. Uh, we should be able to trim these. I'll show you what I use to trim these in the other shop. All three. Wait, why is this thing going off? Oh. I should have showed you. I wonder if it will. No, I won't be able to do it. It actually causes an atmosphere in here. So sometimes when you do it, you see like a cloud form, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I should have done that. But yeah, here we go. Does a beautiful job. Uh, all three. Let's see. Oh, I was asking what type he had. Unless they're all his are Battlestar 3s. So this is Battlestar 2. So that Battlestar 3, they changed it. I think that's when they put in the little computer code thing. If I'm not mistaken, you could type in the, the timer and everything. But, you know, this is Amazon. It's pretty cheap. But, okay, I'm looking at the wrong one. But let's go to the trimming box. I'm going to show you how I trim these real quick. Uh, I'm going to take Sawyer's chair. So I usually just start out with some basic scissors. And I just cut the excess off of here. Now there are different ways of doing this. Uh, I'll try to do a video of each way. One of the ways is uh, peeling this off right now. Now this is still warm. I'm gonna let that cool over here. This is the one I did first. You don't wanna peel these off when they're warm because uh, you can warp them. Uh, but one is, is you get a knife under here and you pop this off and you get, uh, trying to get a better shot. <laughs> so you pop this off, you take scissors and you can cut it. But I tend to like to use this method. This is a wheel saw. I order it from JPC and company where I get the materials also. Uh, and it's just got a little teeth. It's a little wheel with teeth. And let me turn on the suction so I don't breathe this in. And I pretty much just go along right north of the uh, gum line. I don't have any doctors that have asked me to scallop. If they do ask me to scallop, um, I still do it this way. And then I'll get a burr like this or something and I'll do the scalloping with later you can't do much scalloping with this um this wheel saw speed is, is makes a difference in this the, sorry the the rotation the rpms of the of the wheel because you don't want to melt it because uh, it'll just melt right back together and uh, you can't get this off. I'm going to go ahead and make a cut to the outside and that should make this peel off. Uh, I didn't connect it there. There we go. Uh, I think I got the RPMs a little too hot here and it melted the two sides together. So you want to see a nice gap. Uh, you want to see the, the model underneath. So I'm just going to pull this out. So we're left with that. So this is easier to, to pull off now. I have a knife or something. There we go. And I'll just take a knife, slide up under here, just twist it. It should just pop right off. There we go. So now, as you can see, the, the edges are kind of rough, right? So I have these 3M uh, Scotch Bright wheels this one is the coarser of the two and i use it to just do some final contouring get rid of that extra flashing there we go that's one thing i like about this wheel saw is you can use one of these right one of these big ones like this, but it's a little bit more dangerous. 
but it's hard to get in here, especially on like lowers and stuff. It's hard to get in there. See, this one fits almost exactly. With the wheel saw, you can get in the lingual of the interior a lot easier. But you can see with this big, big, uh, Scotch Bright 3M Scotch Bright thing. I'm having a hard time getting in there. But I just contour this. You can see it's made a little groove in there. So then I go to, whoa, this is the medium. That, so that's the course. Well, this is the medium. And I use that to smooth and polish a bit. And what I like to do is run my finger along it like this. Because if it snags on your finger, it's going to snag on their tongue or their cheek or something like that. So that's where I usually find rough spots by just filling it up right there. Filling it with my finger. And your finger's pretty sensitive. But again, it's going to, your, your tongue and your cheek are going to be more sensitive, but uh, usually this does a pretty good job. Now this is where we would uh, peel out the inside like Perry was talking about. Uh, and you got to scrape at it, but using an eraser, that is pretty genius. Uh, next time we do that, I'm going to have to try your eraser idea, Perry. Uh, usually we just kind of scratch at it and try to pull it and scratch at it, and pull at it. Uh, but this is it. This is all there is to that. Let me see if this one's ready and do this one real quick. As you can see that that machine, 35 years old, the old saying, they don't make them like they used to, comes true, because this thing is still churning out wonderful Essex, what I call Essex. Type below in the comments uh, what y'all call these. You can call them invisible retainers. I, I tend to call them Essex, which is kind of like Kleenex. Uh, it's the name brand of a plastic you can use, uh, which is... Uh, made by Dent Supply, I believe. Uh, I'm not currently using official Essex material in this. I'm using uh, what I think is probably Keystone material. And then connect this to the outside. Let's see if I can peel this off. There we go. Peel this off. This is the fun part. I gotta be honest with you. There's other ones. This is actually from Urcoform. There are some other disc and stuff you can use. I think Great Lake sells an orange one that I like called a Dymo, Dymo or something Pro. Uh, I like that to use that one. I'll try to uh, slow it down on the other one, so I'm going to speed up on this one so you can kind of see how fast you can do these. Again, this is the one I use it for contouring, so let's say I got too far away from the tooth and I want to move it closer. This will actually eat the Essex down pretty quick if you dig into it a bit, kind of like I could do in here. Now, make sure I didn't say this before, but feel the inside and the outside. Hey, sorry, if I high shine these, you can you get a camera over there? Okay. It's what? Okay. Oh yeah, that might use this one on my shoulder. 
That one you have to un... It may fall. Alright, so I'm just feeling this around, make sure it's nice and smooth. So then I actually just do a high shine on them. I'll turn on my... So I have my acrylic wheel here. No, I don't know why I just took that off. Here, switch with me. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? <laughs> there we go. You're, are you making them sick to their stomach? It, it's not showing the camera. Anymore. Oh, okay. So this is uh, what we got. I don't know if you can see. There's just a little bit of scuff marks right at the, the border. The cut border. This is falling forward. You have to step on it. Uh, so I just use my acrylic high shine. And I just run it through the high shine right here. And it kind of buffs out all those little, let's see if I can do this side by side. So you see there's a little bit of uh, rough or scratches from, from that those wheels I use. And then this is the high shine part. Yeah, so if I just hit this. And imparts a nice little shine. And then we put it in the ultrasonic. Let it clean up. There we go. Yeah, I'll switch over to the other camera. Let's see if there's any any more comments. All right, all three eraser is your amigo. I agree. I'm, we're gonna try that. Uh, we got plenty of pencils here, so we'll we'll try that eraser thing, Perry. I like that. That is a great idea. Uh, so let's see. I think I got everything. Hopefully, I covered everything. We went from. Uh, uh, Going with the digital model, we went through how we remove the brackets, if we need to remove the brackets, and that's, I need to back up. My head's getting cut off. Uh, well, I went over the machine, uh, pretty much how an old thermal forming machine from 1987 works, and still works today, 35 years later. Um, it does a really uh, great job. I almost use it almost every day, uh, but I've been splitting time between the two, so this is kind of uh my backup the beautiful part about this one uh and i'll do a video on this when i get to it is it will actually auto thermoform when it reaches time so whenever it reaches temperature this will automatically suck down this one you got to stand beside it and wait for the timer and you can't uh you can't can't walk away from it because if you walk away from it uh it'll be beeping and you have to sprint back and flip it over and if you're anything like me you get distracted real easy in the lab and you get uh it, you'll run out of time <laughs> real quick so that's the bad thing about this you kind of gotta stay here and babysit it but if you you can see how fast it works you get a big stack of case pans over here uh with all the models prepped. And that was one of the things we went over is how I prepped these models. And then you just do one, do one after another, just keep going and you can just run them through here real quick, especially once this is up to temperature. Uh, with the new ones, I believe the the uh, the heaters, they, they heat up in a second. And so they actually turn, the heater actually turns off in between. But since I heat up in a second, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter that much. So anyway, I will end it there. I hope y'all, if y'all have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'll get to uh, answering them. But again, this is a, a basic uh, Essex retainer. Every lab makes it, every lab. Uh, oh, thank you. You can turn off the the fan too. Oh no, the, it's okay, go ahead and turn it off. Because it may be affecting the, uh, the audio. 
Uh, I know my headphones when I'm near the, the ultrasonic, they start buzzing. But anyway, I'll end it there. Thank y'all again for watching. Uh, let me pull up my fancy, uh, where is it at? My outro. Now this gets real loud. We got to, we got to redo it. Sawyer's going to help me with it, with the, the audio. So it's going to get real loud. There's his thumbs up. <laughs> But, all right, until then, I'll see y'all next Friday. Until then, uh...